George Hallis wanted more than a prestigious past. And last September, it was his decision to authorize a new era of bear leadership, one kindled by that overwhelming goal of the early years, winning. Rarely does an organization find precisely the right man to lead it at precisely the right time. The Chicago Bears were an exception in attracting uh, Jim Finks. Uniquely, Jim had the opportunity of watching the players for an entire season. We are confident that Jim Finks will combine our winning tradition with the skills that are necessary to win in the NFL today. Uh, having had the opportunity to watch the Bears in 1974, it's been very helpful to me in our future planning. Our team finished the 1974 season on a very bad note. We made the decision at that time that we must change. We must get a more positive attitude created in the Bear organization. I think it had affected the player of our players to a point where they were going into a game expecting to lose. We have taken steps that will correct that. I think one of the major steps that we've taken would be the hiring of Jack Pardee. Jack has prepared himself for this job. I think he has the stability and the leadership to give us what we're looking for in that department. The Central Division in 1975 will be most interesting. We all know that Minnesota is the team to beat. There's been a change in Green Bay with Bart Starr. Detroit Lions look like they've had a great draft. Now it's up to the Chicago Bears to get organized and get out of the cellar and be a real contender in the Central Division. 1975 will mark a positive change for the Chicago Bears as a team they can draw from their history of pride. And with new leadership, they will have a future of promise. As the Chicago Bears' new head coach, Jack Pardee is eminently qualified. An All-American on the field and in the classroom at Texas A&M, Pardee played 15 seasons in the NFL. In 1973, he retired as a player to become a coach with the Washington Redskins. The Chicago Bears are venturing their future on Pardee's past, the record of a winner. Hope to be organized, and I hope can, I can make the right decision in, in coaching situations, but we have to have good players. Where are the good players available? Uh, right now, I'd say they're the first thing, or they're coming out of college. Chicago Bears, first round selection. Walter Payton, P-A-Y-T-O-N. Running back, Jackson State. As their number one draft choice, the Bears feel running back Walter Payton brings superstar potential to Chicago's offense. During his years at Jackson State, Peyton averaged 6.1 yards per carry and scored 66 touchdowns to become the leading scorer in NCAA history. It has been 10 years since the Bears drafted a runner of such promise. That was in 1965. The man's name was Gail Sayers. and fast, Peyton is a 200-pound back who possesses the proven durability required of premier NFL running backs. One man alone can't turn an offense around, but in Walter Peyton, the Bears have a player who can give it a tremendous boost. During the draft's second round, the Bears chose number 79, consensus All-American Mike Hartenstein, a blue-chip defender from Penn State who could add both speed and strength to the defense. At 6'3", 240, Hartenstein should provide added depth and quickness to the Bears' fierce, young front four.
Maryland's Bob Avellini, acquired in the sixth round, has all the potential to be a successful NFL quarterback. During his college career, he completed 59% of his passes. Avellini passed for more than 3,000 yards in college and led Maryland to its best seasons in more than two decades. The Bears' new look in 75 will not be limited to rookies. A trade with the San Diego Chargers brings veteran power runner Sid Edwards to Chicago. At 6'3 and 230 pounds, Edwards has the blocking and inside strength the Chicago attack has lacked in recent years. A seven-year pro, Edwards was San Diego's most valuable player in 1973. His most important contribution to a young Bear team may well be his intense desire to win. Another new bear with pro experience will be tight end Greg Lotta, a tenacious blocker and superb receiver who averaged 21 yards a catch last year for Pardee at Florida. As Jack Pardee said, you need good players to win through the draft, through trades, and from improvement from within. Properly blended, they spell a future of promise. If the Chicago offense is to improve in 75, the improvement must begin up front. The promise is there with such young veterans as number 74, Bob Asher. At the other tackle is number 79, Lionel Antoine. Guards Ernie Janet, number 64. And Bob Newton, number 78, both 250 pounders, flank center Rich Cody. The challenge facing the offensive line is clear. They must pave the way for runners like number 26, Carl Garrett. Despite his size, Garrett attacks defenses as an explosive rusher and sure-handed receiver. Number 47, Ken Granberry, was a surprise last year in his rookie season when he showed a slashing running style and veterans poise. Hopefully, Granberry, Garrett, Edwards, and Peyton will prove the architects of a running renaissance in Chicago. The across-the-board offensive improvement that Jack Pardee's new staff will seek should ease the pressure on Chicago signal callers. In number 10, Bobby Douglas, the Bears have a superior athlete whose passing ability is underestimated. But what separates Douglas from most other quarterbacks is his gutty running instinct.
NFL defenses fear Douglas' running abilities. In 1975, the Bears believe they will fear him as the complete quarterback. The strong NFL teams have selection as well as excellence at the vital quarterback position. For the Chicago Bears, that means the slashing attacks of Douglas are complemented by the classic passing style of number 19, Gary Huff. In 1974, Huff completed 50% of his passes as he directed the club in 11 games. The Bears have a young and talented core of pass receivers. Both a receiver and an excellent blocker is Piccolo Award winner, tight end Fred Pugich, number 82. A fleet group of wide receivers such as Ike Hill, Wayne Wheeler, and number 80, Bo Rather, contribute sure hands and sprinter speed to the Chicago attack. The most exciting of Bear receivers could well be number 83, Charlie Wade. At 5'10", 163 pounds, what he lacks in size, he makes up for in ability. In only his first season, Wade caught 39 passes. His elusiveness and speed enabled him to gain 688 yards on those receptions, an average of over 17 yards per catch. The blend of youth, experience, and new coaching leadership could well spell the difference between the almost plays of the past and points on the Chicago scoreboard in the future. The Bears have always been synonymous with mauling defense. Despite the disappointments of 1974, they were among the NFL's best. The goal in 1975 is to be the best. Spectacular hits alone won't win ball games, however, and it will be up to men like number 45, safety Craig Clemens, to play a steady, error-free, ball-hawking game. In 1974, Clemens intercepted four passes, joining Gary Lyle as another solid NFL safety. At cornerback, the Bears have veteran Joe Taylor. Number 48, Alan Ellis, to counter the threats of wide receivers. Rookie speedster Virgil Livers has NFL potential. And in Ellis, the Bears have a young pro with plenty of savvy. <laughs> 
Ellis' sport is his ability to react to the football. Judging by his success as a second-year man in 1974, he should be victorious in his wars with wide receivers for years to come. Remember the toughest kid in the neighborhood when you were growing up? He might have become a linebacker. One of the Bears' tough kids is number 57, Don Reeves. Sixth year pro number 30, Jimmy Gunn, a former Southern Cal All-American, has solid abilities and fits the Chicago style. The ideal pro linebacker stands 6'3 and weighs 240 pounds. He has the speed for pursuit and pass coverage with the strength to stop the run. Number 50, Wayman Bryant. Entering his second season meets these qualifications. But physical skills are not enough. The key to NFL success is experience. Number 55. 10-year pro Doug Buffon enters the 1975 season at the top of his game. In Buffon, the young Bears will have a constant index by which to gauge their efforts, for there can be no better example of hitting, hustle, and consistency than Doug Buffon. In Chicago's front four lies the bedrock upon which Jack Pardee will structure the future of the Bears. His blend of youth and skill is unmatched in the NFL. Number 72, Gary Rivnack mirrors the group's determination to excel. Left end Dave Gallagher, number 76, completed a successful rookie season as he proved his All-American credentials. Joining Gallagher will be defensive end Richard Harris, number 84, a giant of a man who hits with authority. This young threesome meshed with veterans Mel Tom and Don Hultz in 1974 and now hopes to achieve that extra measure of success the NFL demands. Certainly one of the most highly rated members of the Chicago front four is tackle Jim Osborne, number 68, a man whose strength and aggressiveness can make a shambles of an opponent's game plan. Yet if the defensive line is the Bears' foundation, number 60 Wally Chambers must then be considered the keystone to the resurgence. For in Wally Chambers, the Bears have a player who could be the premier defensive tackle in professional football. From his right tackle position, Chambers' bold and punishing style often carries him on flights of pursuit, the limits of which are only defined by the width of a football field. after only his second year, Chambers has already known the spotlight of personal acclaim. What remains for him and his teammates is the far more rewarding goal of bringing respectability to the Bears. 
Looking ahead to the 75 season is a pleasure for Chicago fans whose ties to the team are passed on from father to son. They will return to Soldier Field confident of improvement. And while there's no instant formula for success, the leadership of Jim Finks and the coaching of Jack Pardee forecast a return to honor for the Chicago Bears. It will be an exciting period, a period framed by autumn afternoons and glittering extravaganzas. It will be a time when the memories of recent frustrations are erased by the promise of the future. The immediate goal is competitive play in the Central Division of the NFC, the Black and Blue Division, where Chicago will play six of its 14 regular season games. The Detroit Lions made improvements last year under new coach Rick Forzano and enter the 75 season on the heels of an excellent draft. The Minnesota Vikings have been a familiar target of the Bears for more than a decade. The Vikings will again be favored to take the division title. Bart Starr heads a Green Bay resurgence that excites Packer backers. It all adds up to an exciting year for Chicago fans and a challenge to the new Bears. Out of the championship traditions built by George Hallis, in the wake of frustration, 1975 launches the Chicago Bears' Future of Promise. <laughs> 